hi everyone so in this video let's talk about serverless framework and lambda so first of all this question arises okay why we need lambda we already have like the ec2 instance forget and all these things to deploy our application it is simple as the virtual machine we are getting from either azure or from aws right the only disadvantage there is they have the limited resources they will keep running 24/7 when your application is up and these are like vm in the cloud right we have to manage those resources like the patching of resources patching of the operating system uh, taking care of the security and uh, access controls of those systems right on the cloud but what about lambda first of all the use case is different not every application which you are writing through the lambda can be compatible with the the vm based deployment right so here we need to understand the case why why we should move to the serverless not every application we should try and just try to move to serverless there are particular use case okay when when you don't want to manage the infrastructure then you should go to the serverless when you when your application is not running 24/7 and consuming resources then you should go for serverless i mean i'm i'm writing some service which will run once in a day or uh, once in a week uh, it's, it's like a batch job right so for that why should i run this process on the ec2 instance or, or maybe on the vm on the azure because if that process is running that is consuming resources and you are getting charged for it but lambda you are getting charged for the request which you are making because when the lambda gets triggered then only the lambda environment is getting invoked and the resources are getting consumed lambda is supported by all languages in it it's like a event driven function and can be called as a function as a service because we are focused more on the functions not on the security patching and managing the infrastructure managing the the system managing the vm right it scales automatically that's the aws managed service right we can easily monitor it using the cloudwatch clean and nice integration with the other services like if we talk about the sqs s3 gateway dynamo db so the whole serverless environment is already set up it's like now you can write your function and can do a lot of things you need mongo db you need dynamo you can you can interface uh, the api gateway either to the lambda or either to some http service right so whole environment is already there if there is a need if you see the use case of uh, using serverless then you should go for it right so this is a stack dynamo db the you should have a knowledge of iam api gateway and lambda and it has a good integration with all these other services so i mean if i'm writing something in the lambda i want batch processing need to do read, read write on that mysql need to do read write on the mongo db or dynamo it is providing integration lambda is nothing but a node js or python code which can do anything with with like any other application is doing right so we'll do a lot of demos demos can be a simple file upload to s3 or resize s3 lambda will resize it and upload it to s3 again uh, there can be asynchronous lambda like you push some message to the sqs it will do a lambda trigger and sqs will message that to one of somewhere else and lambda will listen to that simple use cases you have api gateway you have a lambda dynamo db or a mongo db then we will also talk about serverless framework offline testing integration testing unit testing and deployment right and how you can deploy the serverless rest apis okay dlqs if we talk in depth about sqs lambda with s3 lambda with sqs sns these are some of the use cases which we can cover